fuck it all. Hello, Sagittarius. Welcome to your May Soul Session. I'm Princess India. If you're new and if you're family, welcome back my friend and what's not or whatever. If you're not familiar with what my soul sessions are, they are your spirituality as well as personal development readings in which we look at the energies that you guys may encounter for a given month for the sole purpose of giving you clarity, insight, guidance, and you know, all that other good woo woo stuff, you know what I'm saying? But anywho, we're gonna go ahead and jump into you guys, whoa, cards and one just flew out to see what's going on with you guys for the month of May. And I'm using the after tarot. Those of you who've been with me for some time know I don't read this puppy in the reverse because you know, the author already kind of did that for us. You know what I'm saying? Oh, more cards. So if you see me turning cards over, do not freak out my friend. So let's go ahead and see what's going on with my Sagittarius peoples. Okay, first card out. We have the Eight of Cups. Mm. And then we have the Ten of Wands. I'm just going to stop there because this just got heavy before I turn over the other two. So what is looking like Sagittarius? Coming into the month of May, leaving out of April. And um, I feel this has a great deal to do with the Scorpio full moon, whether you're aware of it or not, my friend, meaning that um, that was on the 26th of April, by the way, but uh, that particular day and the week prior to it and the week after it, <laughs> which leads us into May, um, were very heavy energies experienced by a lot of people. And it was more or less a full moon. Of course, all full moons are, you know, releases, but this was like an epic purge. So it's more or less whatever was a block in your life, right? Whatever it was that was holding you guys back is something that for a lot of people, some people intentionally released it for other people. It's something that kind of faded away or a person that left. And if I were to say a specific message, Ooh. and this isn't necessarily going to be for everyone I'm so sorry for that noise I just made I have no idea what that was but um this feels specifically like a female energy so this would be a Sagittarius female that would be watching this and it's a male um that left so this would probably be like a breakup something along those lines um, it's a male figure that left and it's, it's feeling almost as if, um, you were left holding the bag, if you will, because I feel this person, um, leaving, I mean, for some of you, this could literally be someone getting a job somewhere else, but it feels like it was kind of, um, it wasn't expected. Right. And it's feeling like you were left holding the bag, right. The positive side of this, because mind you, this is not something that has not, you know, happened. This is something that occurred already. But the positive side of this is what I see um, with the Ten of Wands, which is the fact of, um, <laughs> and I'm, I'm going to have to curse when I say this, but it's kind of having a vibe that's very empowered now and feeling kind of like fuck it all. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's just kind of like you being focused on you at this point, because I feel coming into May with this 10 of wands, it's almost as if you were carrying unnecessary burdens, right? So it's, it's an interesting law. Well, I cannot talk. Mercury retrograde is already in my mouth. I find it interesting because it's almost like a flip-flop kind of energy right now this is a side note i just want to say that so this isn't the whole message like meaning for all sad people but this is one in particular that's just jumping out at me at the moment but i find it to be interesting because it's leaving out of april coming into may it's feeling jilted you know what i'm saying because it feels very shocking right and this person leaves you're left holding the bag but it's almost like a switch happens and it turns into like a an empowered, ferocious, like I said, fuck it all <laughs> kind of energy, you know, because it's almost like you had an aha moment and realized that you were carrying a great deal of unnecessary burdens in reference to this person anyway. So it's kind of like being sad and then realizing that this person leaving actually did you a favor. 
that's literally the vibe I get. <laughs> now, aside from that, for everyone else, the vibe that I'm feeling, and this can go one or two ways, it's either you guys leaving, like making the decision to go into the direction of something that's more in service to you. So this could be leaving a job, um, leaving toxic people behind, you know, leaving a relationship, a myriad of different things, and more or less the reason why um, you guys left this situation is because you came into the realization of you carrying too much stuff unnecessarily. So it's almost as if it was, again, with the balance, <laughs> it's almost as if coming into the realization that the friendship, partnership, job, what have you, what you were putting in, it wasn't reciprocated. So you just stopped trying to fool with it. And then I'm hearing something else where this could be, um, what would that be? Like business related, like a product? So I guess those of you guys who own businesses or you have a side hustle or something, and this is kind of like a smaller percentage of people, it would be having a service or a product, right? And this doesn't feel like anything that feels like life altering. It's literally like if you had a pastry shop, right? Hypothetically. And, you know, there was some, I'm just going to say this because everyone's going to think I'm nuts. Like, how could that ever happen? Let's say that you're red velvet cupcakes, right? Because who could ever not like red velvet? I'm just saying anyway, but let's say hypothetically, your red velvet cupcakes are the lowest seller out of all of the cupcakes that you sell, right? And it's almost coming to the realization of how much time, energy, and effort goes into making <laughs> red velvet cupcakes as opposed to the other cupcakes. It's a lot of time that's put into uh, producing those versus all the other ones, but they're the lowest seller. So it's kind of like this realization coming into May when you're looking at, you know, like your sales and you see like, man, it takes me, you know, four hours to make these and all the other cupcakes hypothetically take an hour. And it's like, these are the lowest sellers. So it's like, I'm just going to take these off of the menu. Like that's another way that I could see this because it's really not worth um, the time, energy and effort that you're putting in. So there's no ROI for my business people out there. There's no return on the investment, you know? So the next card that we have is the three of wands. So this is more or less you guys. I like this, Sag. <laughs> I can say this straight up. This, this month has been interesting because all of the readings for everyone are very, very positive. But um, for you guys, it's like it's having your eyes on the prize. Like <laughs> whatever it is that was left behind, it doesn't matter if you're leaving a job or you got you know, laid off or if it's a breakup, whatever the case may be. The beautiful consistency that I see with all Sagittarius is that you're realizing for all of you, not just my business people, that there's no return on what you've been investing. And that clarity, that realization, right? That revelation that you have is what gives you the, uh, the power, the wherewithal and the ability to be able to drop all of it, whether it's a product, it's a friend, it's a person, it doesn't matter what it is. And you guys are focused on the future. So it's more or less not allowing whatever this little hiccup was in the end of April. This is interesting. Another little message I got. That happened at the end of April <laughs> to mess you up. So it's really like taking your power back in the sense and then the funny message I just got, I mean, it's not really funny, it's funny to me, <laughs> but I also feel a vibe of like a Sag person who, uh, and I have to acknowledge you, I don't know who you are, but I feel like the energy of a person who's like watching this, it is like, ain't nobody leave me, I left them, right? <laughs> so this is almost like this first row of energy, if I were to take it and move it back to like the last two weeks of April, it's like you guys were doing something. There was no sadness or anything involved. You just had an aha and were like, ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> and you were like, I'm about to leave this alone. Try to make that work. That ain't working. We're good. And you're moving forward. But the beautiful thing about it, Sage, that I like is that you guys are very much focused on what's next for you. And you're not allowing anything from the past to hold you back, whatever or whoever that may be. 
Now, ooh, child, see, this is what I'm talking about. Next card is the Three of Cups. Come through, Sagittarius. So it's a celebration, like I said, <laughs> with Leo. If you have that in your chart, check it out. It's a celebration, bitches. So it's more or less, dude, you guys, and I love this, Sag. Um, but I mean, I think you guys, characteristic-wise, personality-wise, I know a lot of Sagittarius, and I love a lot of Sagittarius. And my mother, oh, all my friends, Jesus, I think all my friends, well, not all of them, three of like my closest friends have uh, major Sag placements and my mother has, um, she's a Sag moon and rising. But um, so I love you guys, but I feel like y'all are hella light on your feet. You know what I'm saying? I've never really known a Sagittarius person to stay down for too long. It's like, if somebody does something, it's not saying like Sages don't have feelings, y'all totally do. It's like, you're going to feel a way about it but y'all's energy is kind of always on to the next thing. You know, it's like, I feel you guys are a testament of, of what it looks like to really believe in yourself and your ability, because, you know, it's kind of like you trip, but you always get back up. And that's really what I see for you guys. So this three of cups is really speaking to a very celebratory energy. So it's like, whatever it is that's transpired up until this point, and now we're coming into like um, the midpoint of May, for some of you guys, y'all may actually literally be attending um, a wedding. Um, heads up with that. Um, okay. This may be for like one person out there. If you're attending a wedding towards the middle or the end part, like midpoint, like, so let's say like the 15th, between the 15th to the end part of May, and you have mutual friends with someone, so I don't know if it's like an ex or maybe someone you're not friends with anymore, but you know that this, that's why I say this is like for one person, <laughs> but you know that you're going to a wedding and you know that an ex partner or ex friend is also friends with this couple and they may potentially be there. Just be prepared for that. You know, look real nice, smell good and things because they're probably going to be there. But I think it's beautiful because you guys aren't allowing what transpired to really hold you guys back and you're fixated on the future. Aside from if you're not going to a wedding, this is really just speaking to you guys living in the moment and celebrating where you are and where it is that you're headed. Because I feel staying in that vibration is going to carry you guys to where it is that you desire to go moving forward. Others of you, if you've been working a lot or really focused on whether it's personal development stuff or work stuff, and you have not hung out with your friend group um, lately, who child, I know you lying to me, the world card, come through, and you haven't hung out with your friend group in a while, I would strongly suggest, <laughs> maybe this is Cinco de Mayo, <laughs> that is one of my favorite holidays. But um, I would strongly suggest hanging out with your friend group. I think it's time to kind of reconnect, you know? And this is also making me think about um, my podcast that we recorded um, last night. And we were talking about, uh, towards the end of it, we were talking about the importance of a sister circle. And we were saying, um, you know, just with women in general, I feel all women on a spiritual journey, um, it's imperative to have a sister circle because it's it's like a priceless asset to your life. So that may some be something you want to consider. Now with this world card, my wonderful Sagittarius, this is speaking to um, a completion of a cycle. So here's the thing. We're talking about <laughs> whether you're the Sag who realized this ain't for me and you walked away or you're the Sagittarius who, you know, something ended or whatever, and you guys bounce back, or you stop selling that product that wasn't um, really making money, whatever the case may be. I feel this is a huge karmic cycle that ended for you guys that has a great deal to do with return on investment. Like if you wanted <laughs> like a sentence or a collection of words rather, um, for what your lesson has been, up into this time in your life, right? Because I feel for each of you, it could be something different. For uh, some of you guys, this could be years that this has been a cycle that's been repeating. For some of you, it could literally be just within the last year. I wouldn't say that this would be something in the last couple of months. I feel that this is something like years, right? A year or several years. And the way that you would know this is looking at the timeline of your life those of you who are my woke book people, 
who um, did the activities in the 2020 woke book, um, if you looked at your timeline and it's like a repeated pattern that you noticed, right? That's been, especially if it's been since 2016. So if it's been a consistent pattern since about 2016 up until now, this would be that cycle ending. And the whole purpose of this lesson was for you guys to understand reciprocity and what that looks like. So much like what I said for Gemini's, um, with them choosing themselves, right? And that instigating this whole switch up, this is what it's been about for you guys, is being cognizant of when you're investing into something and whether it's friendships, relationships, jobs, products with your business. If there's no return on the time, energy, and effort that you're investing in it, it's not for you. And it's not a burden that you're required to carry and to always stay focused on the next thing, right? Not allowing what's transpired in the past to keep you focused on the past and thus become stagnant, but staying light on your feet, right? And focused on what's next for you, right? Oh, this is so beautiful for me. And then throwing this out there, as far as zodiac signs that are related to the world card, that is Aquarius, that is Scorpio, it is Taurus and Leo. So I would say <laughs> another thing I'm throwing out here, um, because I said this on the network um, in the weekly reading for the first week of May, um, I, the way the message came out is I was telling everyone um, to watch the Scorpio reading because literally the same message that came up in Scorpio's reading came up for the network. And with the tour level on the network, I'm only reading for the energies of the people who are there, right? So it's like with YouTube, of course, I'm picking up on everybody and their mama. But um, on the network for the couture people, I'm only picking up on their energy. And that's why it tripped me out for like, it was like Wednesday, that all the energy that was in the Scorpio reading uh, came up. So I say for you guys, even if you don't have that in your chart, I would still watch it. I would definitely watch Leo too, um, because there's some themes of that in here, even if it's not in your chart. Most certainly watch Taurus, because that's like a collective reading. And uh, the thing I was saying, <laughs> that's so cute. I'm gonna take this. The Ten of Cups is at the bottom of the deck. I just could not resist. But anywho, um, and the thing I said was interesting is that in the Wolf book, child, I know you're lying to me. Um, <laughs> in the Wolf book, I was saying, uh, I tell everyone how to watch uh, my soul sessions in there, right? And I always, always tell people to watch the reading for the Zodiac season that we're in, which would be Taurus, right? But the thing I realized um, in the weekly on the network was Scorpio is, of course, the opposite sign of Taurus. So it's shadow aspects. So it's helpful um, to kind of get deeper insight into what's going on by checking that out. So even so, the same for you, Sage, Gemini is your opposite sign. So it wouldn't hurt to watch that either, my friend. So just throwing that out there. Now, the next card that you guys have that popped out is the Ace of Swords. So we're talking about a mental breakthrough and mental clarity. Then we have the Nine of Wands that came out. And then we have the Five of Pentacles. And I absolutely love the Five of Pentacles in this deck. Because in this particular deck, the Five of Pentacles is talking about picking yourself up from the bootstraps, right? It's being in a situation to where you're in need, right? Or you're missing something or you don't have something. But as opposed to sitting out there and waiting for someone to rescue you, it's like you pick yourself up by the bootstraps. You're like, F that, I'm going to handle this. It's like, I'm not about to sit here and wait for someone to rescue me. I'm going to rescue myself. So I think this is about a shift in perspective for you guys. It's more or less, and I can say this wholeheartedly, Sage, and we're going to dive deeper into it in the extended, but I can say wholeheartedly by the midpoint of May, I feel you guys are going to have like just clarity to where how we have our personal biases, just like with our lives. And we, you know, kind of look back and sometimes it's hard for us to see clearly like what the pattern was or what the lesson was or why did I go through that or why are people acting like that? I feel for you guys, you're going to have an epic aha where it's like, you're going to get it and be like, damn, I never looked at it like that. 
And I feel this Ace of Swords is speaking to that. And with this Nine of um, Wands, it's the same thing here, but it's a heads up with that. Those of you guys who um, may feel like, say hypothetically, when we transition into, um, well, let's say this first, <laughs> a little heads up thing that we talk a lot about on the network too is um, my assistant, Selena, she posts the uh, void moons because we track the void moons because we've noticed a pattern where people can be totally fine, right? And a void moon happens and it's like a void of course moon, <laughs> but a person can just like fall into like sadness and people don't know why type of deal. So I would say with that, or even when we go into um, the retrograde, you know, if you start feeling some type of way, I feel with this nine of wands, which is the PTSD card, right? There may be some stuff that kind of comes up right that you've been through past tense or if there's fears that you guys have in relation to moving forward with something or taking a chance on something or um letting something go right the key is to stay the course if it's so bad to the point that you feel that you need to involve someone else you always know i'm gonna tell you it's about that time to get you a friendly local neighborhood therapist you know what i'm saying the link to better help is in the description below in the event that this is something like childhood trauma or something like that, that's not something that you want to work through alone. But I do feel that there is this clarity that you guys receive. Um, it's almost getting an aha about something that may have wounded you some time ago. And that's what was playing out in this pattern. You know what I'm saying? So the thing that's important is if that's something that's not just like, oh, wow, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, I'm just mismanaging the finances. Like, let me go holler at a financial planner or something. If it's not something like that, and it's something that's like deep seated or trauma you remembered or something along those lines, please holler at a therapist. But other than that, I feel you guys are fully equipped to handle whatever is thrown your way this month because y'all are coming in ferociously, my friends. So anywho, Sagittarius, that has been your reading. I'm going over to the network to do you guys extended. So if you're about that life, follow me on over there. You know what I'm saying? But if not, I still love your face and I will see you guys sooner than later, my friend. Oh yeah, love your face, Edge. I do. It's your little bow and arrow. Love you, I wanted to tell you guys that I'm offering all of my subbies a free trial on my network. If you don't know what my network is, it is a social network that I built to help people find their tribe. And then we have a bunch of tribes over there, like yoga tribe, finance tribe. We have star seed tribe and things, you know what I'm saying? We do events, we do a whole bunch of stuff, you know? But I wanted to offer you guys a free trial. The link is in uh, the description box below. So feel free to check it out, my friend. It's no commitment, you know, you don't have to join, but I just wanted to give everyone an opportunity to check it out. The link is in the description box below. Grab your free trial, my friend, and meet me over there.